You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. What a load of bollocks. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Now, many of you that watch my videos hail from that great nation, the United States. Many of you also are from outside of the United Kingdom and may not always be familiar with some of the words and expressions that I use which are peculiar to good old blighty. That's an example of it right there. And of course, this channel is all about educating you about narcissism, but along the way, it's so delicious to provide you with additional understanding about particular words and phrases and expanding your overall understanding of the word. And let us just take a moment to consider the word bollocks. It's a delicious word, one that sits neatly within the mouth, unlike, of course, not wanting anybody else's bollocks in my mouth. But to aid your understanding, it's British slang for the testicles, and it's been in use in the United Kingdom since the 13th century, so they really are old bollocks. An example being, he kicked me right in the bollocks. Technically, it's a profanity, but it isn't seen as being particularly offensive these days. And it comes from an earlier word, ballocks. So bollocks is spelt B-O-L-L-O-C-K-S, but it comes from ballocks, Ball ox, B A L L O C K S, which in turn came from the Old English bolucas, B E A L L U C A S, which meant testicles. It can also mean, and is the context here, nonsense. It's used in an expression of contempt or incredulity. That's bollocks, that is. What a load of old bollocks! He's talking complete bollocks. This is said to come from another early use of ballocks to describe a priest, and subsequently the rubbish or nonsense that they spoke. Interestingly, that was used as a defence when a virgin record shop manager in Nottingham in the United Kingdom was arrested for obscenity after displaying the famous punk rock album Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols. His counsel argued successfully that in this case bollocks meant rubbish and was derived from the old word for priest and was so was not obscene. The court found him not guilty. Interestingly, another use of the word, but I'm not using it here, means something that's admired or well respected. The addition of the def definite article almost reverses the meaning. For example, that's the bollocks has a completely different meaning to that's bollocks. Popular variants include that's the dog's bollocks, and the further extrapolated that's the dog's danglies, not to mention the mutt's nuts and the badger's nadgers. Similarly, in the United States the word shit is negative, whereas the shit can be positive in certain contexts. Bollocks is rarely used in the singular, with one notable exception. To drop a bollock means to make a mistake, as in, he really dropped a bollock when he failed to listen to an HG Tudor video. And there you have it, a little bit of the etymology of bollocks. Now, I'm using it in the sense of a load of nonsense. And what of this is that I am speaking? Well, it comes from the Daily Mirror and an article by Jennifer Newton. I must warn you that it's completely full of bollocks, but it shows you once again the necessity of Harry's wife, who is, of course, laying low at the moment, keeping a low profile, but yet she keeps popping up in the press. Prince Harry mocked by celeb pal after nickname let slip by Harry's wife. We might know them as Prince Harry and Harry's wife, but it seems that's not what they call each other. Oh, when at home... The pair have nicknames that they use for each other that had previously been private. But Harry's wife once let slip the other name she sometimes uses for her husband, Harry, and it saw him mocked by one of his celebrity friends. What might that be? Bitch tits? Ginger bollocks? Pink pancakes? Prince of pink pods? H? Well, I guess we'll plough on and find out. Riveting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. It came in 2021, bringing up the past, when Harry appeared on an episode of The Late Late Show with James Corden, arsehole, 
and the pair took a bus tour around Los Angeles. At one point, James video calls Harry's wife, and she spots Harry in the background and asks him, Has, how is your tour of LA going? Revealing his nickname. Wow, that's fucking imaginative, isn't it? Who'd have realised that Harry might be contracted to Has? In the way that people call him Has No Balls, or Hazmat, or Hazard. Later, James, a pal of Harry's, mocked Has. I didn't know we were calling you Has, cried Corden, arsehole. To which Harry quipped, well, you aren't my wife. <laughs> oh, such larks. Meanwhile, it's not the only time Harry's wife has referred to Harry by a nickname. She also did it during an appearance on The Ellen Show, bringing up the past, when she began to discuss the amazing bond between her children and revealed her nickname for Harry. She said, he, Archie, loves being a big brother. Everyone tells you, someone told H, and I, you have one kid as a hobby, two children is parenting. Now, leaving aside the ridiculousness of that statement, which, of course, I have dissected in parts pass him, and also the fact of the use of the nickname H, which is objectification, and the use of the pet name by the narcissist, watch the video, use of pet name, we have this very boring reference now to the use of nicknames that we all knew about, but this shows again the level of desperation to remain in the news. Harry's wife, of course, subconsciously sees Harry as an object, and this will manifest in terms of actual behaviours by using a pet name. She doesn't describe to him his own identity, and thus calls him H. Recently in his autobiography, Spare, Harry revealed the nicknames he and brother William used for each other. Throughout the book, he refers to his older brother as Willie, with him calling his younger sibling Harold. Prince Harry's real name is rarely used, and his surname even less so. His full title is Prince Henry Charles Albert David, Duke of Sussex, Earl of Dumbarton, Baron Kilkeel, formerly Prince Harry of Wales. When Harry served in the army, he was known as Harry Wales, and even gave his son Archie a middle name after himself, Harry's son, Harrison. Meanwhile, similar to Harry, Harry's wife's real first name is not Harry's wife. No shit. Really? We didn't know this. Gosh, there's another bombshell tucked away in this brilliant article. When she was born, she was officially called Harry's wife, but has used her middle name, which her parents have called her since birth. All her friends call her Harry's wife, with many also referring to her as Harry's wife in interviews. But ironically, Harry's wife was the name of her popular character in her hit, it wasn't, legal drama, Suits. Well, another PR puff piece courtesy of the Daily Mirror telling us a load of nonsense. And, unsurprisingly, it's another example of the necessity of Harry's wife trying to remain pertinent and in the news. And it would appear that in the comments, nobody's impressed. QVC Nut comments, has been, totally fitting name. Multicast, how about Dopey Dopehead or Dumbass Pot Smoker or Ginger or Hooray Henry? Double DRD, who cares what Blob Corden, asshole, calls him? We have a few lot better things we call them, but if we did say, we would get deactivated. Patrolman, what showbiz pals? Do you mean James Corden, asshole? Once again... Somebody makes the obvious but clear point. Why is this UK news? They don't live here. And accordingly, what they do not find favour below the line, even in a publication that is utilised for repeated puff pieces. This shows, once again, the necessity of asserting control by bringing up the past, triangulation, and sharing with us details which are, quite frankly, dull as dishwater, but is demonstrative of the level to which Harry's wife sinks, uh, even now, she continues her hypocrisy of maintaining a supposedly low profile, but appearing in the press each and every day. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.